I remember running into the helicopter and one guy came out. He was a Halle Burton employee, Dick Cheney's company, and he was a truck driver. He was walking out, he had blood on his face. He was an old man, kind of scruffy, with about a 10 o'clock shot on his face. The guy was probably about 45 to 50 years old, but he looked like he was about 75 at that moment. And he walked out and I went to grab his hand because he was limping and he said, no, I'm okay. The pilot and the crew members of the helicopter ran out and they tell me there's a lot more people inside. So I ran in the helicopter shaking, and the helicopter shaking and rattling, and it's pretty loud. And there was a body on the right and a body on the left. And they both had IV bags on their stomachs on top of the poncho liner. It's like a camouflage kind of blanket that everybody gets when you go to war. The guy I went to on the left side, as I was running to him, his hand kind of fell to the ground, and I thought that he was alive. So I ran to him and I pulled off the sheet that was slightly covering him on one side where I could see the hair. I'm like, oh, okay, this guy needs help right away because he's still alive. I pulled the poncho liner off of him and his head was missing. He just had half. He just had a quarter of it where the hair was and that was, was showing. I thought there was someone there and I'll never forget that guy because he had the same wedding band like I had. And I remember seeing his watch and his fingers were blown up and, you know, just I'd never seen anyone without their head before. There were exposed bones from some of the teeth and stuff. I looked at him and I looked back at the old man who was walking out. And he looked back at me and he just nodded his head and he kept on walking. I look at the crew member inside the helo and he puts his head down. And my other comrade runs in to help me and he looks at it and he puts his head down also. I grabbed the stretcher on one side and we unhooked it from the helicopter and we pulled him out and we were running because you have to do this real quick because the helicopters have to keep on going and go back and get more people. We're running now and bringing him to put it back to put it, to put it in the back of the Hummer, and I'm just like, wow, this is actually a dead body I'm running with. This guy's actually dead here, and his parents, his wife, his kids are home. They don't even know he's dead. It was pretty overwhelming. I remember later on that day speaking to the old truck driver, and he says, man, this is the last time I'm done. I'm going home. That was the fourth time his convoy had been hit. After that, I never forgot anybody's name that died. I'll never forget. We were flying in over Ambar Province which people in America know as Fallujah. It consists of Fallujah, Ramadi, Habania. Inside those places are all these different camps. Camp Manhattan, Camp Blue Diamond, Camp Fallujah, Ramadi, Korean Village. It would be like how Brooklyn and Queens are together, all the five boroughs, but in closer proximity. I was either over Habania or Ramadi on a helicopter's first mission of the day, and they were testing the 50 caliber weapons. This is actually my first mission. I'm on the bird and you know you're in constant communication with the air boss as far as the <coughs> estimated time of arrival of the helicopter and what's the LZ, the landing zone, if it's a hot landing zone or if it's not. You're usually getting shot at on the way down and shot up on the way up. I'm on the bird and it is kind of unstable. They kind of go up and down a lot and as old as they are, they're the ones from Vietnam. I feel very comfortable in these because they move pretty quick not forward but side to side. We're doing turns and the Marine next to me says, Doc, hold on. I think we're catching fire. And I say, huh? He says, yes, hold on, Doc. I think we're catching fire. Right there, the bird did a roll and I'm sitting on the starboard side of it, which is on, I'm on the right side of the bird. And so now I'm looking down. I'm looking down in a 50 caliber shooting. I'm just thinking that he's just testing the weapons. I had my Kevlar on so I couldn't hear what was going on. Um, Sometimes I would have a flight um, helicopter, a flight helmet, so I, I'd be connected. So that's why, just so you, know, you guys uh, kind of don't understand that. But um, I had my Kevlar on, so I couldn't hear what was going on. They're shooting, and I'm like, whoa, okay. We roll the other way. Now the other 50 caliber is shooting. Um, on a CH-46, there is the helicopter with two propellers, just like the ones that the president goes in and there's a 50 caliber on the left side and a 50 caliber on the right side. Um, so when they shoot, they have to turn, and then when this guy shoots, he has to turn. But if you stay down, you know, you can, you'll only turn, you know, in one circle, so it's a pretty easy target, so. Um, all right, let me continue. Uh, it looked like, oh, we rolled the other way. Now the other 50 caliber is shooting, and I'm like, hey, what did you say? He said, we're getting shot at. I'm like, no way. He says, and we rolled over again, and I see the traces coming up, and the traces going down, and I see more traces coming up. And I hear them hitting the rotors, and God, it, it looked like it was the 4th of July out there. 
I look behind the 40 and 46s have they the back is continued it's always open um, the helicopter and uh, it's about 125 degrees and inside the bird you want to add about another 30 to 40 degrees to that so it's really hot and sticky it's so hot it's almost nauseating you're just constantly drinking water with, with your camel pack you're sitting on freaking blood and, and stuff and 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 uh, and I'll just, I'll, sometimes it's the, you don't, you know, we don't have time to clean up the blood, so it starts to accumulate and it like, it, it cakes up everywhere. And uh, so you kind of get used to, you, you think of, uh, you know, you're, you're working 24 hours. Some, actually, I work like 72 hours straight, so you eat and do everything there. And so you look for the driest blood, so you don't, um, that's a that's uh, uh, sterile, <laughs> I guess. Um, it's about so it's really hot and sticky. It's so hot it's almost nauseating. I'm like, oh, if we land, I'm just gonna keep one bullet for me. Uh, this is right around the time that the guy Nick Berg got his head cut off, and there's no way I'm gonna have my head cut off. I'll take <coughs> everyone out, and then I'll just keep a bullet for me. I'm not gonna have these guys humiliate me on television. So I'm like, blank, man, I started praying. So I'm looking back at our Cobras, and they're just shooting out the, hell, the, they're shooting out the hellfires. And I'm like, oh, man. Then we turn again, and I see the Iraqis. They usually roll these little, they usually hang out in these little pickup trucks. They call them Haji pickup trucks, and they're shooting at us. They're really shooting up at us. RPGs and, you know, AK-47s. The terminology, they, they're not pretty accurate, um, but they have a lot of bullets, so they, they're constantly shooting, and we call, we say they spray and pray, that's what we say about them. They don't really aim, they just let clips off and just rounds and rounds and rounds, and it's just non-stop. I could hear the bullets hitting the rotors, and I'm like, oh man, we're going to fall, we're going to crash, and I'm praying, oh God, please, 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 and it just seems like it's forever. It's like slow motion, and we're just turning, and we're getting shot at and the Cobras are shooting and the Iraqis are trying to drive and run. This is my first time and I just want to scream and tell them, why don't we just get the hell out of here? Actually, I did say that because the guy next to me said, no, we've got to neutralize the threat because they can shoot, us a, shoot at us as we're leaving. So I'm like, oh man, I just want it to finish. I just want it to be over. I really just want it to be over. It lasts only about five to 10 minutes, but it seems like an eternity. But then we blew up the trucks they were obviously neutralized. From that point on, you're always on your toes. You're always on the edge. You're living your life out there with your heart just pumping at high revolutions. It's like driving a car at 8,000 RPMs for seven months. Your heart is always palpitating. I think I slept only about maybe 30 to 40 minutes a day, if that. Because the worst thing to wake up to is a bomb attack, a mortar attack, or a rocket attack, or you know, bullets or RPGs. You don't want to wake up to that. It's your worst nightmare. So you're always on point, you're always on the edge. You're always very edgy and snappy, but you learn to live like that. It becomes normal. It's kind of like that even when you're going through an incident <coughs> on patrol, and you're like, you know, should I shoot him? Should I not? Is he going to shoot me? Is he? Should I shoot him? Screw it, I'm going to shoot him. Are they going to shoot me? You have to be like that because that's the only way to survive. The guy that goes to war confident is the guy that comes back in a body bag. But the guy that goes to the war scared comes back alive because fear keeps you alive. This war sucks, man. Got them bullets coming at you. There's bombs coming in. Everybody gets quiet. Everybody gets real quiet. You sometimes don't even make eye contact with the other guy because you don't want the other guy to see the fear in your eyes. But by the same token, your fellow comrade doesn't want to see the fear in your eyes either because he knows. You can't deny it. Nobody can deny that they aren't scared. Nobody. Sometimes you want to say, hey, time out. Stop bombing us. Stop shooting at us. You want to say, cut it. Stop. You know, like it's a movie. But you can't do that. You can't rewind the movie. You can rewind the movie, but you can't stop war. You can't stop the feelings. You can't tell the insurgent, okay, time out. Let's take a break. Don't shoot me right now. Stop the movie. Stop recording.